Uh, I really love my Mexican side because that's part of my family. They're very nice and loving and they're all about family and like unity, which I appreciate. I also my black side as well because black people are just dope in general. Yes, like, I, let's we do are. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today's video is going to be on how I got this hair color. I'm gonna be doing this challenge of some sort. Hey guys, I'm Arnell if you don't know me. Normally I'd be showing you how to do your hair and makeup, but today we're gonna get a little more personal and talk about something I've never talked about before, and that is being mixed race. My mom is Mexican and black, and my dad is black. Part of being mixed is being constantly told that you have to pick either being one of your races or the other. Both cultures are beautiful in their own ways, and I love being able to identify with both. I get comments, either in person or online, pressuring me to somehow prove which side I identify with more. I think in a way it's made me unable to fully identify with either, and I'm really tired of it. Today I'm coming in with an open mind, ready to learn and hopefully be able to embrace both sides of myself once and for all. One of the amazing things about living in LA is how easy it is to access Mexican culture and history. I'm starting my day off on Olvera Street. I've heard so much about this place and decided to finally make the trip to see for myself. I headed to Langolandrina. LA's first established Mexican restaurant. Here I am meeting Jasmine, a local, who has worked here for several years to learn more about the history and culture of this part of town. Alvera Street was founded in 1781 oh. by 44 settlers, which was a mixture of Spanish and African Americans. It was never called Alvera Street. It was called Wine Lane. But then as the years went by, um, the town had a, a judge named Austin Obera, and they decided to name it after him. So that's how it became Obera Street back in 1877. What are these? Those are chicharrones in English, pork rinds. Oh, they're, they're hard. They. Once you, yeah, once you chew them, they're a little tender from the inside. I'm nervous. Mm. It's so good. And that's... That's uh, guacamole. I don't really like avocado. Try it. I'll You'll try love it. it. Try I'll it. Try it. Try it. Try it. <sighs> Here it goes. Oh my god. It's like warm your soul. We have a ma uh, mariachi band here on weekends. Oh cool, my grandpa was a part of one of those. It's actually so cute now that I think about it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. I'm a weenie. Because he passed away, but he was so cool. <laughs> Listening to the music, memories of my grandfather and family came back to me. It reminded me of where I came from and grounded me in the fact that my Mexican culture has been a crucial character in my story for years. But I still had this feeling I couldn't quite shake. I had to talk to somebody who knew me better than anyone else, my mom. Hey mom. Hey. So. I know you're at work and whatnot, but I want to ask you what it was like growing a mixed race. Okay, so for me, being born in the late 60s, it, it wasn't common to be mixed race, so it wasn't as accepted as it is now. Um, so it was a little rough for me because being black and Mexican, I wasn't black enough to be black and I was not Mexican enough because I was part black. So I kind of fell somewhere in the middle there. For me, growing a mix was kind of difficult because like you said, you're either not black enough or not Mexican enough. And while I really enjoyed being around our Mexican family, it's interesting that I relate more to my black side. It kind of weirds me out because I, I didn't really grow up around them. With you growing a mix, how did that affect how you raised us? I don't think the way I raised you really had anything to do with being mixed. It was more taking my own experiences, but I don't know that um, race had anything to do with it. 
So how do you think things have changed towards the idea of being mixed? I, I, yeah, it's come a long way and it's become very accepted. And I mean, there's, there's a few that don't believe in it, but it's very common now. All right, well, I know you're at work, so I'm going to let you go now. Love you. I'll see you later. Okay. Bye. I thought talking to my mom would clear things up for me, but what I walked away with was a sense that even our experiences are different. I want to get into a creative space to help clear my head. For me, that means playing with my hair. Hi, how Hi. are you? I'm fine. Good. I went to West of Heaven in Culver City to meet with professional braider Jessica. I wanted help creating a braided style that represents both of my ethnicities. Okay, well I have an idea. I figured we can do the signature part down the middle, mm -hmm. like Frida, and then um, two big cornrows going straight back, like Beyonce, you know, yeah. like in her formation video. And then at the end of the braids, I can add up some ribbons, any color that you like, I have a couple colors. And then we can twirl them around to buns. Growing up, I wasn't even aware of the texture I had. I kind of thought that everyone had the same hair texture until I was doing one of my friends here in high school. Mm -hmm. And I was going to do the same style I was doing myself, so that would be easy. And I realized it was completely different. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I've made videos like centered around my natural hair, I've gotten comments saying that it's not right for me to make those kind of videos because I don't have a certain hair texture. Mm -hmm. I got a few comments saying like, pretty much like, why is she making these kind of videos? Her hair texture, she can't relate to like the struggles of having natural hair and that kind of thing. It's a bit frustrating because wow. it's like, yeah, my hair texture is different, but I still have my own little struggles and whatnot. I hope, you know, you don't take that to heart, you know. It makes me not want to do natural hair videos, which is why I don't do them oh on my, God, my no. channel. Come on, but you, but you, you, can't, you can't do that because there's so many people who have the same texture of hair as you. But also t ties to my skin tone as well because I feel like on social media, a lot of times I've gotten comments saying that like, I'm too light to do like natural hair videos like that, i've literally seen articles of people saying that like why are light skins trying to be a part of this movement when it's something you know for darker skinned women so mm. it kind of makes me feel comfortable doing those kind of videos because i also don't want to intrude on a movement that's not meant for me so like i've gotten people tell me that i i don't understand what it's like to be black because i'm lighter so i haven't been the same issues and i get that like i understand that but like it doesn't make me any less black in my opinion it builds a hatred within our own race mm -hmm. to hate someone else. I noticed that a lot of um, people feel like, okay, well, if you're like half of something, like if you're, if you're half of something and then the other part of you is black, everyone feels like, okay, well, you're just black. Yep. No, you're both. And there's nothing wrong with identifying with both. There's nothing wrong with that. I just want everyone to just really get that out of their minds. You know, it's just like, that's just, that's just bizarre. I feel like being mixed should, should actually be embraced because I feel like it's cool to be able to like be a part of two different cultures. I think it's like, great. Throughout this experience, it's really made me excited because mm -hmm. I finally feel like comfortable enough to embrace both sides of my culture without being scared to be attacked for it or judged or questioned about it. Oh good. You should feel comfortable doing anything that you want to do. I, and I commend you on that. Embracing both sides of my heritage has never been easy, and I can still tell I have so much to learn about myself and my cultures. But I don't have to pick between two sides of one whole, because they are both crucial parts of who I am and who I want to become. Thank you so much for watching. For more videos, click here, and to subscribe, click here.